uh, did that race. Really oh, then, 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 then the segment that's, you know, uh, coming out of this show. Well, this show was being taped. I was at the gym. And uh, I was waiting for a machine. I started scrolling Twitter. I'm seeing all these notes about Hangman and, and, and prayers for Hangman. I thought, God, what happened? And so uh, that was obviously Tuesday evening. And uh, by the time I watched the show Thursday afternoon, it was well known Hangman was fine. It was much scarier than it looked much scarier than it was. But I can tell watching this live why why that was the that was the big story coming out of it. When you if you if you have been watching this live, why that would have been all that's on your mind. Now that we know he is going to be relatively fine, and it was not as bad as it appeared to be, this William Regal MJF segment is what's going to be remembered about this show in like a decade. People are going to say, remember that promo with Regal and MJF? And they'll say, yes, I do. It was this one. So Shivani is trying to interview William Regal, but MJF immediately interrupts. He comes down to the ring, and Regal pulls out the brass knucks. He's ready for action. MJF says, you can put those away. I am here to talk, not to fight. And he tells a story. I will, it's a long story, so I'm not going to great detail. But he got essentially a tryout. At age 19, he got a tryout at the Barclays Center, a WWE tryout, and Regal's one of the guys watching. And after he won his match, he sort of note that uh, he got the win. Regal pulled him aside and said, first of all, he said, you got three minutes to sell yourself to me. Go. And so MGF cut a promo. It was great. And Regal said, I was, Regal said he was going to get uh, uh, MGF a job. And MGF replied, at that point, and this is the exact words he used, I was no longer a five feet nothing ADD riddled Jew boy. That's the word MJF used to describe himself. He was going to be a superstar. But then Regal found out he was only 19 years old. That's too young to start with WWE at the time. Now he could be Thea Hale, I guess, go down to NXT. But Regal says, listen, I got lots of people jobs here. Claudio Castagnoli, Brian Danielson, John Moxley. I got them all jobs. When you are of age, I will put my name on you. I want you to go home, send me a match, and send me a promo every month. And so MJF did as he was told. He kept working, put his match together, put his promos together, put him on tape, sent him into Regal's office. And after the third month, got an email back from William Regal saying things have changed. The WWE only hires the best world-class athletes. When you are one of them, get back to me. This made MJF very, very upset. In fact, he said it made him want to kill himself. It was the words he used. But if he did that, he knew Willie would win. Well, he, he called him Will every time. You were a sad, withered old man who got fired, he said. I am the guy your former employees would kill to hire. I read that email when I need a laugh because you're a joke. I will be the next AEW champion because I'm better than you and you know it. And the place is going nuts for MJF. Because he told a story about the guy who was told he can't do it and did it anyway. So it's Regal's turn. And he starts to speak. He's passionately booed because he was the authority figure who said no. And Regal tells his story. Uh, MJF was 19 years old when he had that uh, tri uh, tryout match that didn't go as well as he'd hoped. So Regal tells about his youth at age 16 at the carnival, fighting grown men trying to get into this industry. And uh, these days, you can't beat a 17-year-old in the face to try to make him quit. The email I sent to you uh, wasn't casting you aside. I was trying to light a fire under you. And if that email meant that much to you that you've hung on to it for seven years, then you had it easy, sunshine. He likes a lot of things that MJF has done, but I have been insulting Tony Schiavone since before you were born, but you never put your hands on him. You let me down because you took shortcuts. You haven't proven anything to me yet. I didn't need a ring to knock people out. I just like hitting people with brass knucks. If you want to be a real bad guy, you want to be the devil, beat whoever, beat whoever stands before you and do whatever it takes. And he gives MGF a chance to prove how evil he is. He turns his back and dares MGF to clubber him with that ring. And Max just won't do it. He can't bring himself to attack this guy from behind. So Rico says, you still have a lot to prove. And smiles and walks out on him. This was unbelievably great television. I thought this was one of the best promos that MGF has ever cut. Maybe yes. the best promo he's ever cut in his life. Yes. I, if there's a better one, I'd love to see it. And it was over and I thought, my God, that was the most incredible babyface promo I've ever seen in my life. And uh, then at the end of the show, as we'll get to, I mean, he's he's teasing going full babyface. He's flat out saying, I'm going to call it. I mean, he's doing the John Cena. I'll call my shot. I'm cashing in. I'm telling you in advance. I want you 100%, and I'm going to do it right. And that show went off the air, and I thought, well, man, holy smokes. 
They got they got two ways they can go here. The obvious two ways. Number one, he goes and he does it right and he turns babyface. And he's just going to be a huge babyface. Not necessarily forever, but, you know, top babyface here for a while. Or uh, or B, he doesn't do it right. And, uh, and then they really hate him. That's what I thought. But it was interesting because I saw this promo and I just started getting email after email about MJF. My God, look at this guy. What an incredible promo. What an incredible baby face. And I, I'm just getting flooded. And uh, then I started to get some other emails. Brian, you're a moron. This was a heel promo. <laughs> I was like, what? And uh, essentially, there are people who looked at this promo the way William Regal looked at the promo. Essentially saying exactly what William Regal said, which was, so let me get this straight. You trained for one year, had a tryout, did great, Mm -hmm. were too young, and we're told via email, we're not interested in you right now. And and this just, like, destroyed your life. Like, what? What an entitled... I won't even say the rest of what some people said. But, uh... I didn't see it that way, but there were some people that did see it that way. And when, when they when they brought that up and when they pointed out everything that Regal had said to him, it did really make me think, like, did this go over my head? Like, is that what this was supposed to be? Because at the end of the day, here's the thing. If, if that's what this was supposed to be, no one in the audience got it. The entire audience saw this as a 100% babyface promo, as I did. So, I mean, that's one of the things that I like about this storyline and this company in that, uh, you know, every now and then they do things. And if you really start to think about it, there's a lot of ways that they could go. And we just saw it last week with uh, with Jericho and, and Daniel Garcia. They set it up so it could have gone either way and either way would have made sense. And that's what happened here. And, you know, he he has said that he's the devil. He said it over and over again. But at the same time, there's very much a tease here that he's going to go babyface. And he is getting big-time babyface reactions. So I, at this point, have no idea what he's going to do. I don't know if he's going to be a babyface. I don't know if he's going to be a heel. I really don't even know the intention behind this promo. But it is a... It was an incredibly, incredibly amazing promo. Enthralling. That I will not forget, probably for my whole life. Riveting. Yes. Mm capturing uh i don't think it's right to call it a it it definitely got a baby face reaction it sure did zero doubt about that i don't think it's right to call it a baby face promo nor do i think it's correct to call it a heel promo he cut a human being promo something happened to him it was very important he had an emotional reaction he explained himself and when he was done you thought to yourself if that happened to me i might feel this exact same way well, see, the other thing, too, Vinny, is, is uh, as you mentioned that, you know, I don't I never liked the shades of gray that people like to put into pro wrestling. And I wouldn't call this shades of gray. This is not shades of gray. But what it is is, you know, who's at fault in a war? Well, well it depends on whose side you're on. I suppose so, yes. I mean, not always, but, you know, if if you and another person are feuding... You each have a different point of view. Right. The, the point of view is what determines all of this. Yes. So so to somebody in William Regal's position, you know, they look at what he's saying and their point of view is, what the fuck? Whereas if you're MJF and you tell this story from his point of view, he was wronged. Yes. He was he was he was lied to. He was he was, you know, this it, it's his hopes were raised only to then be dashed. And dashed in not a polite way. No. At all. I mean, if that is if that is actually what the email said, like, we are no longer looking for wrestlers. We're looking for world-class athletes. And when you're one, get back to us? Yeah. You couldn't write a more shithead thing in an email to a guy. Very hard to do. So, yeah, there there are, you know, there's two ways to look at this, and there's there's two different points of view. Yes. So, from his point of view, it very well could have been a babyface promo. Uh, not a baby face promo, but just a real life promo. And from someone else's point of view, they could have seen it in a completely different way. Anyway, yes, uh, uh, thrilling, gripping. If you, if you somehow missed this episode, by, by all means, go watch this part because it's going to be talked about for a long, long time. 
Maybe they should get like a different producer to give the show a different kind of feel. Actually, actually yes. Maybe okay. they should put the cameras upside down. How about that? You know what they need is black and white. Or put him black and white, Jared. Make him <laughs> look as old and gray as possible. There we go. Excellent. Hey, Jared, can you put Vinny upside down? There we go. <laughs> this is what's going to make this show better. We're going to review Rampage with Vinny on a different camera angle. Put it in an angle, though, Jared. Like, uh, yeah, add black and white. Now yeah. we're talking. Vinny, can you spike your hair up next week? <laughs> yeah, just put your hair up in a spike. <laughs> we'll, we'll have you doing the show upside down, hanging from the ceiling like a bat. The Vin yeah. Man. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.